Hello everyone, welcome back to Face the Black Nation channel and I am coming back at you with another timely video. So as you can see right here uh, and on your screen that the six individuals of the Nashville shooting, they are the victims of the Nashville shooting that has took place, um, I believe on Monday. Um, well, I want to talk about Audrey Hale, who is the individual who did the shooting of the three individuals of three nine-year-olds as well as three adults. So this individual, they want to know as to why this 28-year-old who identified as a male because she, she, well... She looks like, from what I am hearing from the different news articles, because I'm getting so many different uh, variations as to who this individual is. Um, from what I am hearing is, is that she is a biological female, but identified as a male. But yet I'm also hearing that she is, that it is a biological male, but identifies, identifies as a female so it's kind of diff difficult to figure out which what is which because i do know that if you look at the thumbprint of this video it does look like a boy it really does look like a boy and the way how he she was dressed when he he she was inside of the private school the christian private school he she was dressed looking like a boy the reason why I'm saying he, she is because I don't know. But all I do know is that the individual is transgender. Now, there was a story that came out that I posted on my Facebook page uh, that this individual, Audrey, has written a manifesto. Now, I would like to know what is inside of that manifesto. Because right now, according to the alphabet community, they didn't like the fact that this is this situation was brought to light because, see, they fear that people are going to become um, how you want to say aggressive towards them inside of their community. I just want to know what this individual wrote. But anyway, who is Audrey? Well, they already starting the mental issue thing it never fails with them even though the police you know they have deleted her as they rightfully should have because of the what she was doing but right now it is being said on cnn as well as on yeah it's on cnn that is being said that she was under doctor's care for an emotional disorder According to the Nashville Police Chief John Drake, who said at a news conference on Tuesday. So they are already saying that she was under emotional disorder and that she legally brought the seven weapons in the past three years, but kept them hidden in her home from her parents. Now, I doubtly believe that they are they are in Nashville. So I doubtly believe that she purchased he she purchased this on uh, these weapons and um was able to hide them successfully from their parents within the past three years so i highly um doubt that but the cnn does goes on to say that tennessee does not have a red flag law that will allow a judge to temporarily seize a weapon from someone who is believed to be a threat to themselves or to others but the thing is, there is no evidence that Audrey was believed to be a threat prior to the week. And it is being said by the police um, chief, it is being said that law enforcement was never contacted and she was never committed to any institution. But they already are trying to make her appear to be as this victim that we should feel sorry for because of her being trans or him being transgender. And I'm going to tell you the reason why I say that. And I'm going to let you know as to why I say that later on. But what CNN is um talking about, about Audrey, is they're basically trying to 
make her appear like she was just this fun loving individual because they Don Lemon was interviewing a former t uh, teammate of Nashville um uh, the Nashville school that she had went to and um the individual name her name is Patton and she said that she knew Audrey well when they was kids and she said that she haven't had a relationship with the suspect since they were children. Is that she only referred to to Audrey as she. So this is what I'm saying. I don't know as to what this individual identify is identify as. It's just that I know that she is that he or she is transgender. And I'm trying to make sure that I be politically correct as I give out this information. Now, Patton said that she has received an Instagram message around 9.57 a.m., which read, one day this will make more sense. I've left more than evidence behind, but something bad is about to happen. Now, Patton said she was not uh, sure why hell uh, Audrey reached out, but she said, I'm asking God the same question, which Patton has told Lemon. Now, what we know about Audrey is that she has graduated from an art and design school in Nashville last year, according to the school's president, which confirmed at CNN. Now, according to her LinkedIn or his LinkedIn profile, it says that Audrey worked as a freelance graphic designer and a part-time grocery shopper. And her or, her or him, her or his Online portfolio shows a collection of Audrey's work that includes images of professional logos, cartoon animals, and a parent self-portrait. One image includes the phrase, to be a kid forever and ever. Now, what this, what the former um, vice president of the college is saying, Brian Edwards is saying, he describes her as the sweetest little thing. I'm just shocked. My wife and I has been crying all day about it and saying that Audrey was really shy and really good. See what I'm talking about is that they are already trying to paint this individual as some some sort of victim as someone that we should feel sorry for. Um, that they just cannot believe that here is someone that would just do something out of the blue and that they are basically telling us because she was going through these emotional disorders that we should really be feeling sorry for her. Well, I would like to go right on and to, to say even further about her is that, or him is that this individual by him or her being transgender Okay, from what they saw on his or her or her social media, she was suffering. So what um, this guy from her um, university that she went went to to this college is describing her as being upset on the first day of class when unable to figure out how to set up a password. Audrey had to leave the classroom, adding that Audrey only outbursts. They also said that Audrey's illustration work was whimsical and childlike, describing the student as small and quiet. And that they could have, when, and, and wish they could have seen Audrey do children's book for a living. So here we have this individual, this transgender. They're painting so that they won't, so that the media does not, get attacked by the alphabet community they want to make sure that they uh, paint this transgender individual as someone that again as i may mention someone that we should really be feeling sorry for now i can't feel sorry for someone i don't care what or who you identify as the simple fact that you have deleted um, children as well as adults I cannot feel sorry for you. So even though CNN is over here and I will be posted a link in the description box so that you could also go to it. Even though CNN is trying to paint this picture of this individual as being a loner, someone who was shy, someone who was quiet, someone who they would have who wouldn't have hurt anyone their drawings they were so whimsical their drawings were so sweet and so soft that they could have seen them do something for children um literature for a living basically just saying hey 
We understand that what this individual did was wrong, but hey, we need to look at this person. This person was actually suffering. Well, you have six families who are really suffering because according to a Metro article where they are saying that one of the nine-year-old girls who was deleted uh, she has passed away as a hero by trying to pull a fire alarm to stop Audrey Rampage. So she was trying, so this little girl, Evelyn, was trying to stop, and she's the one that you see at the bottom right with her hand, with her head over on her hands. That is Evelyn. She is the one that tried to sh- fire off a warning that there is something happening in the school. However, she was one of the individuals, one of the young children that was unfortunately was deleted by this deranged individual named Holly. I mean, Audrey, that we should be having some type of empathy towards because she was going through some type of life changing. And this is, this is what I really want. This is what I really think that they're trying to drive home is that, um, transgenders, they go through so much and that they because they're trying to figure out themselves. They're trying to learn who they are. They want to be accepted by society, but instead they are shunned by society. They're being looked upon as being the weirdos, as being the freaks in society. So they want people to look at them is that by them having these identity crises, they feel that they was born inside of the wrong body, that we should have some type of thoughts or feelings that says, okay, I can understand. I can forgive give you as to why you would do such a thing because you was going through so much yourself I can't I can't go with that because like I said there is another article um that says that she has written Audrey has written a manifesto and I want to know what is inside of that manifesto and I truly believe that they are going to keep that quiet because if I was to, if we was to read that, then it would probably paint her in a different light than what the uh, mainstream media is trying to paint her as, as someone that we should feel sorry for. Now, I do look. I don't understand what it is like to say that I'm born within the wrong body. I do understand what it's like going through depression, going through the emotions. I suffer from bipolar disorder. So I understand when someone is going through something and it feels like your world is dark. It it could be happy and sunny on the outside, but the inside, it is a dark room. The door is at the top of the ceiling and you have no way of reaching that door. The only way, the only thing that you could do is just to crawl up in the corner and just wait for that door to slowly come down so that you can be able to go outside of that dark room. That is exactly how it feels when you're going through a mental crisis. It really hurts. It really damages you. You really don't have anyone to reach out to. Even though people can sit up and say it's going to be okay. Why don't you pray? Why don't you um, try to open up the window? Seriously, they will say that, you know, to let the light come through. Do all of those things. It does not matter. When you're going through a depression, when you're going through something like that, your world is just going to stay dark for quite some time and it may be it may take some hours or it may take some days in order for you to get out of it. So when people say it's going to be OK, it's not really going to be OK. The only thing that you could just basically say, I am here if you need me. And that's like the only words that someone who is going through an issue who is going through bipolar or who is suffering from severe depression. That's really what they want to hear is when you say, I am here when you need me. But this individual, Audrey, hell, what she did, she, whatever the situation said, because see, and, and, and CNN article says that she was never committed into any institution. The law enforcement was never um, contacted. What CNN article does say is that it was believed that she has weapons training. According to the police uh, spokesman, Don Aaron, who uh, told CNN. 
And what they are doing right now is that they want to know where this training could have taken place along with working the timeline of Audrey's movement on the day of the bloodshed that took place at this school. Now, right now, you have Biden who is saying that they make a plea to Congress in order to re- to act on the Second Amendment because we do know that they are going to go after the Second Amendment with this because this is supposedly the um, 19th. This is supposedly the 19th shooting at a school or university. So um, what they what the massacre, I'm sorry, marked the 19th shooting at a school or university in just the past three months that have left these individuals wounded, according to CNN. So I just want to make sure that I correct that information there. So they're going to try to go after the Second Amendment with this um, because we have too many of these shootings that take place at the schools um, by these individuals. It's almost like we know them by now when it comes to these uh, these shootings. Now, what I will say is that I am surprised that they took this individual out instead of taking them into custody like they normally would they would take them into custody but I think the last time there was another school shooting where the individual mowed down so many children and and I guess this time they they probably said we're not going to take any chances with this we're actually going to do an outright delete of that individual and that's what they did with Audrey who was 28 years old. That's what they did with her or him. They went on ahead and took this individual out um, after what they have did to by deleting six individuals. So I just really think that I find it funny how the alphabet community, how they are very quiet on this, but they made sure to say something after it was said that there was a manifesto that was written by Audrey. Now, I I really do want to know what is said, what's said in there. The LGBTQ community, they really did come out and say something about that, but they're not saying anything as far as how we should pray over these over these victims, how we should be doing what we can to stop these particular shootings from happening because this isn't the first time that someone from the alphabet community did a shooting. There was another shooting by someone who came from who was binary, I think. I believe that person was binary. I believe they was part of the alphabet community and they did uh, a mass shooting as well. And the LGBT, I'm sorry, the alphabet community, they was very quiet about that situation. They did not want to shine. They did not want the light to be shown upon them. Now, see, these individuals, they want to portray to you that their lifestyle, that their life is oppressed because of the lifestyle that they live. Like I said before, I don't know what it's like to be um, to be said that you're born in the wrong body. So I, I will try to understand you and try to give you grace by acknowledging your humanity. But what I will not do is stand by and say, you know what? I understand because you're going through so much mental issues. So I am going to excuse the damage that you are committing to others around you that I am not going to excuse. And no one should be doing that as well. What happened to these babies? They was nine years old. That should not have ever happened to these individuals. We had these three adults who was also, um, that was deleted as well. That should have never happened to them because they probably was just going about their day, doing their thing. And I'm pretty sure that they did not think, none of them thought that it would be their last time on earth. It just goes to show you how life is very fleeting. You don't know when your time is up. You just don't know. But because there's too many people in the world that does need help. Now, see, this individual seeing that they knew that this person was suffering from some type of mental disorder. I'm sorry, some type of emotional disorder. They should have intutilized her. They should have sent her to an institution. They in order to try to help this individual get this individual the help that they properly needed. But even if they was to do that, who knows? It probably still wouldn't have helped that person. Because again, 
when it comes to these this type of individual and the alphabet community, they are going through a lot. They are going through an identity crisis. So any and everybody around them are the ones that's going to suffer because you don't know what that person is going through because they may be saying that I'm not being accepted in today's society because of who I am and who I identify as. So I am going to take my anger and my frustration out on everybody else that's around me. Now, I do find it to be. I do find it to be suspect as to how CNN was able to reach out to this black woman, uh, Patan, as I was um, described, as I was reading her information early on, uh, who Don Lemon had interviewed. I'm surprised that they reached out to her and not reach out to any white former classmates of hers. Um, Because to me, in my mind, And this is how I'm thinking, and I could be off the wall with this, but bear with me. Here you have this black woman, Patton, or Patton, however you want to pronounce her name. Um, With her, she is trying to describe the situation as her being a good person, what she remember when they was a child. Now, black people are already oppressed because of our complexion. Let's, it, it, it's just how it is. We face racism um, daily because of our complexion. Those, the T and the alphabet community, they claim that they are oppressed because of who they I sexually identify as. So to me, in my eyes, it seems like that they want to have one group that is supposedly oppressed to be connected to another group who are oppressed. So when you have someone who is from an oppressed group, which is black people, commenting, trying to speak for Audrey, who did this mass shooting uh, of at this school, basically in so many words saying, see, we can look and agree, come together as one as a community with your community so that we can show people that look this is what we have to go through and we need to tell people to stop oppressing us you see what i'm saying so basically like i was just saying you have one supposedly oppressed group who like to make that claim that starts with the t and then you have an oppressed group which is black people because we're black you have one black woman that is interviewing talking about this so-called oppressed female or male trying to make it so that we should shine light upon a group of people who are being oppressed. I hope you was able to follow me with that. But that is the way how I am thinking. You never know as far as what the media is concerned because the media, they would do any and everything to allow people to piggyback off of our suffering. We are suffering through a lot. The alphabet community likes to try to attach their struggles to our struggles. And so this is the reason why I just said what I said, because you, 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 you just never know. You just never know as to their whereabouts, as to why the media is doing what they're doing. Because I might say to myself, why won't you find another white individual who went to this uh, Catholic school with Audrey? I'm just trying to find that out as to why wouldn't you now CNN is saying that it's a uh, referring to him as a she, but I'm also getting information elsewhere that's saying that it's a, it identifies as a he. So I really much don't know that I I, I really much don't know. So that's why I just, just use the name, just, um, calling it by the name Audrey as to what do they have described? For this person who who deleted these individuals at this Catholic school, this private Catholic school. Um, it really is sad as to what took place. You really much don't know what is going through a person's head. You really have to keep your head on a swivel when it comes to people. Uh, you could really be doing your everyday your everyday thing 
and someone could come in and just ruin it for you and for your family. Um, we are dealing with a lot of people who belong in a padded room. We really indeed do. Instead, what we are doing, we are celebrating individuals who are who are going through mental issues, but yet they are candy coating it by saying this is what I identify as. We really have to deal with individuals who are saying that when they really belong in an institution. Because not just only them, there are other people as well. But when it comes to them and they really have their situations because of their identity issues, you just don't know what is going to come. Now, I'm not trying to bash the community or anything like that. I'm not trying to belittle. Like I said, I may not agree with your lifestyle, but I will never deny you your humanity. You're still a human being. At the end of the day, you have the same organs. You pump the same color blood through your veins, through your body as I do. So I'm not going to mistreat you because of that. I'm not going to mistreat you. I may not agree with it, but you should respect my decision just like I respect your decision as to how you want to live your life as long as you keep what you're doing over there I will make sure I keep what I'm doing over here and not encroach it on encroach upon your space you see that's exactly how I try to live my life when it comes to me dealing with these individuals because they are going through some situations that most people who are heterosexual are not going through you know, heterosexuals, you may have some that goes through me. I'm a heterosexual um, who face depression. But with these individuals from the alphabet community, they are going through identity crisis and depression at the same time. So they have a lot more going on as far as as far as going on inside of their head than they do than the next person. That's just me. And if anybody wants to disagree with that, by all means, you can. It's just that I understand because of someone who suffered from depression and then to have something else added on to you, that doesn't make a good recipe. It's a recipe for disaster. That's what it is, a recipe for disaster. And then, like I said, I don't like the fact as to how they're trying to make this individual, Audrey, trying to have it so that people should feel sorry for her or him because this person is a transgender no you have to think about the lives that she or he has cut short this individual cut short three lives they was nine years old they was in school they were sent there to learn their parents did not expect for them to get a call to come up there to identify their baby's bodies that is exactly what I have to look at and what everybody have to look at. These parents lost their children. The, the adults, they, they have lost fathers. They have lost a son. They have lost a daughter. They have lost an aunt and uncle. They have lost grandparents. That's who they have lost. They lost that on Monday. That is exactly what they have lost. And so for me, I'm going to make sure that my heart goes out to those six individuals. But as far as with Audrey, I could really care less because you knew what you was doing. You woke up that day. You wrote a manifesto. You wrote on an Instagram message. You left an Instagram message saying that one day this will all make more sense. I left more than enough evidence behind, but something bad is about to happen. And this is according to the screen grabs um, sent to CNN affiliate WTVF. So this individual, Audrey, knew exactly what they were doing. They knew what they was doing. They made sure they woke up that day. And they said in my head and they said in their head, this is it. This is the day that I am going to carry out this action. It remind me of that. Um. Caucasian girl decades back who shot up a school and when the police asked her why did she do it and she said oh because I hate Mondays 
See, these you, you don't know what's be going on through through their heads when they do stuff like this. So I will say, black parents, protect your children. Even though it may be hard, you may wish that you could be with your children 24-7. But you got to do what you possibly can. You need to let them know that there are people out here that does not have their mind right. And that there are people out here who are dangerous and wish to cause bodily harm to you and to those around you. Because they are going through something and they want to make those around them suffer. That's what they want to do. They want to make those around them to suffer. So I really do feel bad for these individuals. Um, keep them in your thoughts. Because you know, it could have been one of your family members. It could have been one of yours. You could be at work. And you get a call from the police. And they're telling you. Are you able to come down to such and such to identify a body? No one will want to hear that. Because your heart would just drop. No one will want to hear that, especially when it comes to your child. When you're busy doing your everyday, everyday thing, and then you get a call talking about that you need to identify a body. No, ma'am. No, sir. So this is uh, the info information that I want to come to share with you about uh, this individual as to who Audrey Hell is. So that you can, and I am going to post in the CNN links. And to the description so that you could also read over it as well. But I wanted to give you my thoughts upon the situation as to how I don't like the fact that they're trying to have us to garner some type of empathy, some type of sympathy towards Audrey because of what he, she did. I don't feel sorry. What this individual did, and they was 28 years old, I don't care if this person did all these type of drawings and paintings to the point that... It was so wonderful that they could have been some type of um, written a book for children. That's how soft that they want to make this individual appear so that people could be like, oh, my goodness, you are absolutely right. We should feel very bad. We should have some sort of thought towards this person because they could have been suffering. They're part of the T community. They part, they're part of the T and the alphabet community. So they're going through so much. No, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying any of that. And neither should you. I hope you all have a good one.